Hello and welcome to Chapter 3. I'm Charles Severance and I'm your instructor. So here in Chapter 3, again, I'm just, I want you to read the book. I'm just going to call your attention to a few of the unique things that uh, might help you make more sense of the book. So we're going to talk about semicolon use, how it's uh, started in C and is used across multiple languages, how ELSIF is a little different across languages, the switch statement, a bit of motivation, why the switch statement is even in C, um, the comma, comma, I don't know, operator, separator, and then sort of this, this tendency towards excessive succinctness or brevity that uh, is pretty common in uh, C programming, right? It just, it's like it's, it, there's such a value in making things really, really short, and that makes it kind of different. So I love semicolon-based languages, and we have a whole bunch of semicolon-based languages that that we've learned and are going to learn. Um, certainly 1978, the C programming language with its you know, non-syntactically non important spacing. Um, the key to C is that C, the semicolon, is a terminator and every statement must be terminated by a semicolon. So we say x equals x plus one semicolon and x equals x divided by two semicolon, right? And that's, that's the idea, the printf ends in a semicolon. So you may or may not know in Python, you're allowed to have semicolons. They're pretty much optional, like on the print, open paren, x, close paren, that semicolon does not need to be there. But it is a separator, not a terminator. So you can think of the print, open paren, x, close paren, semicolon as one statement followed by a separator, followed by an empty statement, which does nothing. But the interesting thing is you can put more than one line on one line. You can put more than one line of code by put using a separator. So there I say x equals x plus one semicolon x equals x over two semicolon. I don't have to indent that. I just, it, it, uh, it's two, two lines in the same block of code and that's legal. Most of the time people choose not to use semicolon. The other thing about that is that shell scripting, which is sort of the Linux automation uh, treats it as a separator. And so that sort of looks a bit like shell scripting to have multiple statements on the same line uh, separated by semicolons. In uh, Java, it tends to follow the C pattern where it's a terminator. I tend to like it as a terminator. I don't like the idea that you can leave it off the way JavaScript does. And so you see it's on two assignment statements and the system out print lin in uh, Java. In PHP, PHP follows C very closely, and so it is um, it is a terminator there as well. And so that I, I think that's natural. And the good news, if it's a separator, like in JavaScript in the next example, where it's separating it, and so in this case, the x equals x divided by two does not need to be terminated because the closed curly brace is gonna, gonna terminate that. And, um, and like uh, even the console.log, open paren, close paren, semicolon, that semicolon is optional. When I tend to write JavaScript, I tend to put semicolons everywhere. When I tend to write Python, I put semicolons nowhere. And then in PHP, C, and Java, I tend to, you know, put semicolons everywhere. <laughs> even though sometimes there are things you can leave out. Another thing that is very, very subtle is the notion of else if. So C predates Python, and um, C in this book shows else if as two separate words, and there's an else keyword and an if keyword, and so you say else space if, and then you have the expression and another statement, else space if expression and another statement, and then else for the one where none of those expressions are true. And if you look at Python, it looks almost identical. It says if expression, then l if expression, l if expression, and else. The key is that l if is a separate language construct in Python. And I think it's actually really beautiful and elegant. And the key is, is that this else if, while it is, I can think of it in C as like indented incorrectly. So you can look at it as the very first if has an if and an else, and everything from the second if on down is really part of that else. And so if you look to the right, you see the curly braces with the indentation that's explicit. It's exactly the same thing, but what you're going to see is you can see that it's, the, if you were gonna truly correctly indent 
an if, else if, else if, else in C, you would indent it the way it's shown on the right side. And it, it's neither here nor there. Very, very, it is very rare that you would see any C programmer, you know, do all the indentation the technically right way. But I just want to call your attention to it that it's different than LF. LF is its own language element that is not a deeper nesting, deeper and deeper nesting. If you were to nest it, you see on the right hand side, you see I've got three curl, closed curly braces, curly brace, curly brace, curly brace, and it's just, ugh. So the LF, I think, is a really elegant addition that Python has added. Thus, which statement? I, I think that the reason that the authors put the switch statement into C is there was a time where we would write code in assembly language using what we call a jump table, where we take sort of the, take a number, maybe take it, mask it so it's only from zero through 16, and then look up a series of addresses and jump through a jump table. And the computed go to was the way in Fortran of expressing a jump table. But in Fortran, it was just a mess. You got these, you got these labels and columns one through six and the continue statement doesn't work like the continue in, in C and, and uh, C-like languages. And you had to have these go-tos to get out of the, the switch statement. If you think about it from an assembly language pr perspective, it's not that hard to build the computed go-to with a little tiny jump table. Um, and so I, th I think to some degree, whether or not we have to use a jump table in modern C is really, it's really, really rare where you have to use a jump table. We just would do a few repeating else ifs and it's just fine. Back then, a few extra statements might have bothered something if you were gonna do it a million times a, you know, a million times a minute or something. The switch statement is much prettier. You do have to put the break statements in there. You can kind of nest the, you have the stack cases and then there's a default case. So if I at least I compare the C switch statement with the Fortran computed go to, I want to say that the C switch statement was pretty much a lot more elegant, a lot easier to use, a lot easier to understand. And because assembly language programmers of the time did think in terms of jump tables, if a high level language didn't have a way to express a jump table in that language, then we would kind of think of it as missing. But frankly, you know, in your programming, I, I'm not sure I've written a switch statement in, because Java has a switch statement too. I probably haven't written a switch statement in over 20 years and maybe more. So I, I like the fact that it improved on Fortran, but that doesn't mean that, that you should use it. The comma operator or comma separator, it's, I like to think of it as like a light version of the semicolon. And um, most people almost never use it. And the only place we use it is uh, when it is sort of uh, idiomatic, where in a for statement, because we're already using semicolon to separate the start before the loop, the loop test, and then the loop increment per iteration, we're using semicolon for that. So if we want to do like two statements, we are going to like, oh, I equals zero, J equals Sterlin S minus one with a comma in between to say, do these two things before the loop starts. And then at the end, you say I plus plus comma J minus minus. This says do these two things at the end of each loop. So I only see it in idiomatic situations. Just think of it as like, we couldn't use a semicolon here. It functions exactly like a semicolon. You, although the syntax already has a semicolon in it. So I, I think it's actually a pretty clever um, way to say, I wanna put two statements in here. You could, maybe you could put curly braces in there or something, but I thought the comma was a pretty cool thing. Another problem is that there was just this notion that we as assembly language programmers, we could do things like be smart and leave some value in a register and then check the register a couple of different ways. And that would lead to really succinct fast code, hand-tuned code where you might have to look at it to figure out what it's doing, but then you realize, well, I, I did that in six statements rather than 12 statements. 12 statements might've made more sense, but the six statements were really fast. And in the early days, in the early 70s, they were changing their compilers so fast and changing their hardware so fast that they really didn't build um, super great optimizing compilers. So they would look at the source code well, that came out of the compiler and like, I could do better than that. So there was a lot of a kind of comparison of the source code um, between the, what the C compiler would generate and whatever. And so they've found over time that if they would 
kind of use these tricks that like told the compiler to like take this c equals get char and leave the c in a register and compare it to double to a space and then compare it again to a new line and compare it again to a tab we would think oh i i can see how that would run in assembly language and i can hope that the compiler would generate the assembly language that um, compiler would generate assembly language that would make me happy. And then another pattern you see in this is the number four thing where all the work's been done in the loop test. This is a while loop. That whole big expression is just the test to know when it's done, but it's actually reading the data, comparing it three times, storing it in a variable. And when that's all done, there's nothing to do in the loop. And so that's why you say close paren uh, semicolon. And you'll see a lot of those things, especially when you're doing string stuff where you're sort of zooming through an array and you did it all in the for loop and you don't really have anything to do in the for loop. And again, we're thinking in the early days of how this is going to translate into assembly language. And so you're trying to make that loop really, really small. And again, it's amazing how often they looked at the resulting assembly language um, in a non-optimizing compiler situation and then wondered if the compiler could have done better. So that gets us going in uh, this chapter. We talked about the semicolon, we talked about the switch statement, the else if subtle syntax difference between Python and C, the comma, and just get used to the notion that it's obtuse code. Please don't write obtuse code. These days, the optimizers are so great. And, uh, and so don't write obtuse code, but don't be too upset as you read the textbook and see obtuse code.